Episode 9, Be Flexible. Welcome to Not Really Hungry, the podcast that explores how to eat mindfully, lose weight, and change your life. Now here's your host, Tanya Blankenship. Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. I have been sick, so I'm sorry if my voice sounds crazy, and I'm hoping I can make it through the entire episode, um, but I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. Today, I want to talk to you about being flexible with your plans and your eating choices. Now, I know this might sound crazy because I've been preaching planning for months now, but stay with me. Being flexible is also really important. Life is messy and things happen. So are you just going to throw up your hands and be a victim when something interferes with your plan? Or could you have a backup plan? Or could you learn to be flexible and make informed decisions? The point of the daily plan is to help us eat with awareness and reduce our impulsive emotional eating. But it's not intended to be restrictive. Being super strict on any plan can lead to feelings of deprivation, and we definitely do not want to feel deprived. The whole point of my core four method is to find a balance that allows you to eat this way forever and really enjoy it. I know it might feel scary to be flexible. You might believe that your plan is the only thing that keeps you from going overboard. You might even doubt your ability to make logical decisions. But those are just feelings. They are not facts. The fact is, you can learn how to use flexible restraint. I look at having a plan as like having a map when you're traveling or your GPS. So if there's a bridge out, you take a detour. You don't just say, nope, that's the route I plan to go and just drive right off the cliff, right? No, you find a new route to go. So it's the same with weight loss. Changing your plan doesn't mean turning into a bingy Becky. Bingy Becky is a close personal friend to negative Nancy, and she will tell you all sorts of crappy thoughts about why you should eat everything in sight and eat as much as you can before you get back on plan. But that's also something I really want you guys to change. I don't want you to think of yourself as being on plan or off plan. You just eat how you eat. Sometimes that means broccoli and sometimes that means cheesecake and that's totally okay. When you stop restricting yourself from certain foods, you stop making it so tempting. When you make something off limits, suddenly it's like all you can think about. But when you know you can have that food anytime, it becomes no big deal. I know it might be hard to believe, but I'm telling you from experience the past six months, I have completely basically gotten rid of all my rules other than the core four. There are no off limits foods and my cravings have decreased dramatically. And I really believe it's in part because I know I can have things when I want them. So I think there are lots of benefits to being flexible, but I'm just going to go over a few with you. The biggest benefit for me of being flexible is I think it helps us avoid that all or nothing thinking. I can't tell you how many times I gave up on a day or even an entire week of tracking my food just because of one meal. Like if I didn't know how to count something, I would just throw all my rational thought out the window and eat my face off while I was quote unquote off plan and relaxing. Does that sound familiar to anybody else? I think because weight loss is so emotional, we forget that plans change all the time in other areas of our lives. And I've really noticed this lately at work. We have meetings all the time to talk about the status of a project, right? So then during the meeting, we assess where we're at and we revise our plan as needed. There's no drama. There's no talk about failing because we didn't stick to the original plan. We just adjust the plan based on the new information we gathered at the meeting. No one ever scraps an entire project because one small piece didn't work the way we thought it would. If Staples stopped selling paper for the copier at my office, would we just suddenly insist that people stop printing and stop making copies? No, of course. Of course we wouldn't. That's ridiculous. 
we would just find a new supplier to get paper from, right? But we do that with weight loss. We act like one small little deviation from our plan is going to ruin our entire day or even our entire journey. I mean, to be honest, how many times have we used one little one little bump in the road as a reason to just quit? And it's, you know, months or years later before we try to get back at it. That all or nothing thinking is really something that we should strive to overcome. And I think the more flexible you can be, the easier it will be to overcome that attitude. Another benefit to being flexible is that it allows you to adapt to the spontaneous things that happen in life. Those things can be positive or negative, right? But you need to be prepared for them because things happen. So let's say you want to have a last minute dinner date with a friend, but you didn't plan to eat out that night. So should you tell your friend no, just because you didn't plan to eat out? Or should you go out to dinner and not eat and just sit there and drool over their food? To me, I think that's crazy. I think if you want to go out to dinner with a friend, go. Just think about the rest of your week and then make a plan for how you're going to handle this meal that, you know, is going to be out at a restaurant when you didn't intend for that originally. So look at your week and see, maybe you haven't had a splurge. So you decide, yeah, I'm going to have a splurge when I'm out to dinner with my friend. But maybe you do have other events going on this week. And so you go to the restaurant and you order something that's kind of similar to what you had originally planned. Not every meal out has to be extravagant. And that's something that took me a while to really wrap my brain around. Because I used to feel like if I was going out to eat, then I was going for it. You know, I was going to order the, the like fattiest thing or the like the thing that I normally wouldn't allow myself to have or whatever. One day I realized that when we were out to dinner, it wasn't the only time we would ever be out to dinner. And if it's not a special occasion, it's not your birthday, something like that, it's okay to just go to the restaurant and eat like quote unquote normal. Like you don't have to completely stuff yourself just because you're at a restaurant. So knowing that you're going out to dinner, if you have time, it would be a great idea to check the menu and plan your meal first. That frees up your brain from decision drama and allows you just to focus on enjoying the time with your friend. But I also understand there are times when that's not possible. Sometimes you're on the go and you just can't sit down and look at a menu or decide what you're going to eat ahead of time. And that is okay too. I've done that myself. However, you can still follow the hunger scale, right? You can listen to your body and stop before you're stuffed. That has nothing to do with deciding what to eat ahead of time. That has everything to do with being present during the meal. You can also decide in advance if you will have dessert or not, and then honor that commitment to yourself. You can eat slowly and only eat the foods you love, and you can say no to impulse eating. And you can always remind yourself to be a reasonable Rebecca instead of a bingy Becky. Now let's say you have something spontaneous come up that's maybe not quite as fun as going to dinner with a friend. Let's say you have a sick spouse or a sick kid, or what if you forgot to buy a key ingredient for dinner and now it's too late to go get it and you're starving? What are you going to do? Are you going to go to fast food? Are you going to order Chinese, like what, what's going to happen in the moment? Could you keep some frozen dinners on hand? We always have frozen pizza as an option. Now I know it's not going to win any awards for like the most healthy meal, but it's already here. It's quick and it's better than going face down in a delivery pizza because we were starving and overwhelmed, right? So another option is having a preset list of takeout options that you know will easily fit into your plan. And I heard about this idea from Brandy over at Busy as the Bee, and I just love it. Like she talks about it's her plan B or her backup plan that they know multiple places where they could go and grab a meal without wrecking her goals for the week. So I just really like that idea. And I think it would be really beneficial if we come up with a list of ideas and do this during a calm point in life 
so you have the list ready and when things get crazy, you don't have to try to figure anything out. You can just get something off your list. I really wish I had something like this in place back in 2001 because shortly after my husband and I were married, my mom had a stroke and she was in the regular hospital for quite a while and then she was in uh, a rehab facility for even longer I mean, we're talking months and the emotional stress of it, of course, was huge. And like I mentioned in previous episodes, I really didn't have the best coping skills. So I'm dealing with the emotions of that, you know, trying to be there for my dad, trying to be the strong one for my brother. I'm also a newlywed, like there's just so much emotional stress and drama going on, right? So you mix that in with... I'm working full time and trying to get to the hospital every night to see my mom that very quickly turned into grabbing fast food and just grabbing whatever we could find that was quick and easy, which in itself probably wouldn't be that bad if I had had that foundation of knowing my go-to choices or even if I had, you know, the, the mental toughness, I guess, at the time You know, I could have asked my husband to make a sandwich and bring it when he met me at the hospital or something like that, right? Um, But I guess at the time, I didn't have any of those things in place, and it just became easier, I thought, (laughs) to just fall back to hitting the drive-thru. And again, like going out to eat or hitting fast food in a pinch wouldn't be that big of a deal if I would have been either making smarter choices, number one, or number two, and probably most importantly, if I had been actually listening to my body, you know, hitting fast food wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I wasn't listening to my body. I don't even know, honestly, if I was all that hungry or, you know, if a lot of it was stress eating. I mean, of course it was dinner time and In my mind, I was like, well, yeah, obviously you have to eat, right? You have to eat dinner between work and your next thing. That's just what people do. So the issue was that I would get, you know, the quarter pounder or the, you know, the Baconator or whatever. Like I would get the worst sandwich I could think of and like the big fries and sometimes a milkshake. And I mean, clearly it was comfort eating, you know, more than just trying to meet my hunger needs. So that's why I feel like if I had had some of these habits in place already when that happened, then maybe it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have spiraled quite as much as it, it did. Um, cause I mean, I think now if something like that happened, I feel like I, I do know healthier options. I do know how to coach myself through it, you know, and, remind myself that the food isn't going to fix anything. I mean, me stuffing my face didn't make her get better any faster. It didn't change the fact that she's still partially paralyzed. Like, you know, none of that was helpful to anybody. In the moment, I guess I thought it was helpful to me because I, I think I thought it was comforting myself because I didn't really know a better way. And so it's not a bad behavior to try to comfort yourself, but when you're doing it in a destructive way, in a way that leads to more problems, it's really not the best option. So again, that's why I'm really hitting hard on this one. Like if we can come up with some ideas ahead of time before life is crazy, even if it's not as drastic as a loved one being in the hospital, I mean, it could be just as simple as, you know, your kid forgot something at school and you have to run back and it took longer and now you don't have time for the dinner you thought. I mean, There's so many things in life that can just throw things out of whack and having things to fall back on, having a plan B already in your mind, it's just going to make it that much easier because in the moment of stress and frustration to try to come up with something on the fly, your brain's automatically going to go to what I used to do, you know, the high fat, high sugar comfort type foods. And that's not going to help you get to your goal. So if you have a a backup plan, then when things get crazy, there is no decision drama. You just, you know, think, okay, I'm picking something off this list or, 
you know, I know if we go to McDonald's, I get this meal or whatever. Just try to get some of those ideas together ahead of time, because I think it will really, really benefit you. The other thing I think being flexible helps with is it helps you really assess and learn from the changes without judging yourself. When you go into your plan, knowing that you have some flexibility, I think it helps remove some of the self judgment that most of us are really good at because when you're willing to be flexible, then you don't look at making a change as a failure. Instead, you can look at changes as feedback. Just make notes about the situation that led to the change of plans so that you can learn from it. That's the key thing is that you don't want to beat yourself up about it. You want to take advantage of what you can learn from it so that you can handle these situations better and better every time. So again, I mentioned earlier, instead of being a bingy Becky, try being a reasonable Rebecca. Reasonable Rebecca knows that plans can be adjusted in a calm, rational way. She also knows that you can still totally meet your goals, even when you're changing things on the fly. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm saying plans aren't important because they are. And you don't want to be changing your plan all the time. There's a big difference between changing your plan to eat an entire bag of chips versus changing your plan because you were stuck at work late. You see what I mean? So when you want to change your plan, you really need to think about why you're doing it. Don't just throw your plan out the window. Ask yourself a few questions. First, ask yourself, why do you want to change your plan? And really think about if you want to change your plan from an emotional place. You know, is this an emotional decision based on anger or stress? Or can you mindfully make a revised plan that you will still be proud of? Those are a few things I want you to think about before you decide to change your plan. And I do want you to put some thought into it. If you're changing your plan, I don't want you to just say, "Woo, I'm being flexible. I'm going to go have three margaritas tonight. That That's not the point of this. The point of this is to allow you to roll with the punches and adjust when you need to without feeling like you're completely blowing your week. So for example... If you're stressed out at work and you suddenly want chocolate, that's not a reason to change your plan. That's a time when you should take notes and write down things like what caused the urge and, you know, what your craving is for and remind yourself of your why. Is that chocolate more important than the thing you want most? That's an important distinction that you need to think about before you go off your plan. If you just don't feel like having the lunch you packed, I'd say, "Mm, too bad. (laughs) Use a little tough love and stick to your plan. I mean, if you're just looking for excuses to overeat, that's not a positive reason to change your plan. But if you're willing to take a minute and figure out what your best choice is under these new circumstances, that's a success in my book. So don't beat yourself up for not following your plan when life throws you a curveball. I just don't want you to let that curveball knock you off your feet. Hopefully you can see the difference. I know it's really not black and white, but the key point really is your intention behind it. You know, why are you choosing to change your plan? It all comes back to being aware and making the best choice for you in that situation. You get to choose what you eat or don't eat. Do not let your emotions make those choices for you. It is all up to you. So I would love to hear ways that you guys are flexible with your plans. Or if you struggle with being flexible, tell me about that too. You can reach out in the Not Really Hungry Facebook group or shoot me an email. I would love to hear more from you and keep this conversation going. Next week, I'm going to have my first interview episode. I'm going to be talking with Brandy from Busy as the Bee, and you'll get to hear all about her journey and all the tips and tricks that she uses to lose and maintain her weight loss. So be sure you stay tuned for that because I think you guys will really like what she has to say. 
All right, guys, until next time, remember, eat mindfully so you can lose weight and change your life. Thanks for listening to the Not Really Hungry Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email podcast at notreallyhungry.com or leave a voicemail at 330-595-4662. If you want to hear more from Not Really Hungry, check out the blog at notreallyhungry.com where you'll find even more ways to eat mindfully, lose weight, and change your life.